War in the Middle East. Israeli forces drive spearheads across the Sinai Peninsula, west to the Suez Canal, south to the entrance of the Gulf of Aqaba, breaking the blockade, capturing the west bank of the Jordan River, and occupying the old city of Jerusalem. The first crippling blow came early in the four-day war, when the Arab Air Force was destroyed on the ground in air raids on 25 bases in three countries, Egypt, Jordan, and Syria. Israel's new defense minister, General Moshe Dayan, hero of the 1956 Sinai campaign, was instrumental in mapping his nation's battle plan. The sudden swiftness of the Israeli army crushed UAR forces with a combined air and ground one-two punch. Egypt's charges that U.S. and British air units aided Israel are vigorously denied, while diplomatic relations are broken. Efforts toward a ceasefire continue at the United Nations. U.S. Ambassador Arthur Goldberg introduces the peace plan. An immediate debate is started in the Security Council representing 15 nations. While the United States and Russia disagree on the wording of the resolution over troop withdrawal, Israel's Foreign Minister Abba Ibn charges UAR President Nasser plotted the murder of a state. The vote is finally taken and the resolution adopted unanimously. Word continues to come from the battle zone, telling of sweeping Israeli victories. Next day, Egypt accepts the UN ceasefire, joining Jordan. This left Syria facing Israeli forces alone. The United Nations arena remains in the world's spotlight because of the many questions raised by the short but decisive Middle East War. With Israel now controlling the Sinai Peninsula, all approaches to the Suez Canal, Old Jerusalem, Bethlehem, and the Gulf of Aqaba, the diplomatic struggle now begins.